Good afternoon, everyone. If I don't speak loud enough, just let me know and I'll make sure I'll adjust. I'm actually here to present you the initiative that we called Ethical Charter. But before I get to I get on with that, I'll give you a short snapshot of why we ended up designing the Ethical Charter. As Serge, Aline, and Christine mentioned earlier, we've had multiple years of discussions with many of you. Actually, I think I know pretty much half of the room today. So it happened that we had those bilateral discussions just on a one-to-one -one basis, and we had these multi-stakeholder platforms. So we definitely encountered challenges with pretty much every one of you in the process, and it actually turned out that we identify a few key concerns with you, with your feedback. So what happened with that feedback, we try to develop different types of training. Might they be an info day, full day, dedicated to answering your questions, or training material that could be available online, like slide decks or templates. Typical, we issued this grant agreement templates that is available now in what we call the info pack for HCOs and PCOs. <coughs> so basically, all of this is available online. But then we did develop in our outreach, we needed to communicate also to our members, how do we communicate to HCOs and PCOs? So towards our members, we had internal meetings, we had newsletters. But if you look at this, actually it's very fragmented. We used multiple channels. And actually information got lost in translation. And that was a huge, actually a huge gap that we needed to cover. And this is why today we're here to relaunch the ethical medtech compliance platform. So I just want to put things in perspective so that you see where it comes from. There is the Metic Europe website. Addresses, it addresses all the industry-related topics that you need to know about. It's for the public, it's for the members. We have an internal section for members. But there will be a duplicate of this website that we call the Ethical Medtech website, and it's the compliance portal. So it's going to be dedicated to every single initiative that is going to stem or not from the code, because we'll have other initiatives that will not necessarily be totally connected to the code. But at least you know that there will be one place where you can find all the information you need to know when you organize your events or when you have any specific issue when it comes to perception, to interacting with industry. I'm also speaking to our members because they're on that side of the room. So basically, the ethical charter, as you saw on one of the previous slides, is one of the pillars. It doesn't come out of nowhere, just as much as CVS stems from a need to assess events on specific criteria. We decided that we need to address one specific problem that you organizing events encountered, and actually our members encountered, a problem of timing. Because when you organize your events, you need to know far in advance what kind of support, what kind of financial support you can dedicate to that event, and how then you organize all the activities stemming from that event. So basically our members were frustrated because they couldn't commit to fund different types of events that were totally compliant down the line, but the timing issue with the timing needed to assess the events was blocking them from committing to your events. And on the other end, you were stuck because not getting the final green light of the CVS, even though you would get it in the end, would block you from developing the program, inviting your speakers, inviting your professionals to these events. So basically, we brainstormed a lot and we interviewed a lot of Congress organizers. It doesn't matter if they're a healthcare organization or a professional Congress organizer. And we decided also that there was another problem to address because the code is definitely an industry code for industry, designed by industry, right? But you in the room are impacted.